there are three great reasons why you should build a site plan. The first is that a site plan is probably one of the most important tools to help you with the proper design and spatial layout of your system. Secondly, a site plan serves as an indispensable resource during construction. Combined with construction drawings, you can really effectively convey information to the owners or the contractors or others helping you during the installation. And three, your site plan will basically serve as a, a place to capture your final construction and as-built notes and uh, any kind of record keeping that you might need for future maintenance, upgrades, changes, particularly important if you install underground infrastructure. There are a few basic tools that you'll want before getting started. You'll want, obviously, a pencil and an eraser, as well as a pad of uh, 11 by 17 paper, or also called ledger size paper. I like to use graph. You can also easily build yourself your own clipboard, such as what I've done here, large enough for the ledger size paper. Um, and this one's built out of medium density fiberboard with a binder clip. I really like it when I'm heading out doing field assessments. You can absolutely use the smaller letter size paper and clipboard. I personally find it's just too small for clearly communicating the average sight. The next absolutely indispensable tool is an architect's scale ruler. It's basically a specialized ruler, ruler that makes drawing something to scale really easy. So in this example, I'm gonna show you a real property report, also called a cadastral map. Often the homeowner can get these from the municipality as they're used for taxation purposes. But what's great about them is they often always show the dimensions of the lot, the house placement, all the sizes. And creating data overlays is really easy to do using CAD software, but if you're doing it by hand, what I recommend you do is you get some vellum paper, right? And so it's, it's moderately transparent paper, and when you put it down on top of your base map, you can still see your base map, but you can start to draw this, the other layers of information and keep those layers of information really well organized. Here's an example of an elevation overlay. What I've got shown here are the contour lines at the different elevations, and these are all in meters. Sectors are energies that interact with or cross your site. And there are a few different types of sectors that are relevant to rainwater harvesting system design, including wind, fire, view, and solar, like your summer sun angle and your winter sun angle. And the way that these are typically represented on a sector overlay is something like this. Now that you've got your base map with all your data overlays, the next step will be to evaluate the potential locations for your water storage. The reason we look at the tank first is often because it's the largest element in your design, it's, there's, there's the most constraints in terms of where it can and cannot go. Okay.